Hey, digital media artists. So we're going to talk about how to model a cat hat in this video. And I wanted to show you what not to do uh, before we talk about how to actually model this. So inside uh, our class, uh, we talked about why using Booleans were bad ideas. So I'm going to recap it here. So a student might think that if I model this, and I'll show you guys what it looks like individually. So first we have this modified cone that we uh, turned into this right here. So we kind of made a cone, we extruded it up, we got rid of the bottom, we flipped the faces, and now we have this beautiful looking part of the cicat hat. And if we add a torus, which is like another word for like a donut, and add it here, and if we merge these two objects together, you might think that this will be a perfectly fine way of modeling this cicat hat. And yes, it might actually look correct. So let me go ahead and hold both of these and show you what we did in class. We went to mesh, boolean, and combine the two meshes together. And then what we end up with, and I'll hide the old ones here, what we end up with is this 3D shape. And it looks good from the outside, right? It looks like it has a beautiful inside face here, outside faces here, and all these edges look good. So it looks like a properly good model. But let me show you guys what's happening when you guys use Boolean that you may not realize. So if I go to vertex mode here, and let's just choose a few vertex, excuse this vertex right here. If I move this vertex, what I expect to see is that both this edge, this edge, this edge, and this little small edge here, all four connecting edges will move along with this point if I move it up or down. Let's go ahead and do our test. And what you see here is that this edge is looking good. Right? This is exactly what you want. You want all four edges moving along together. Now let's check out this edge and see if this also passes our test. And you can see here, this one does not. So let me go ahead and hit F so you guys can focus and see it. I expect this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge to move with it. But as you can see here, as I move down, what do you see? You see another point right on top of this point. And that's, again, due to the fact that we use a Boolean. When we use a Boolean, two points that are standing right on top of one another may not com be combined in the union process. And this is what's going to cause us issues later on when we try to either UV texture this thing or when we try to even maybe render this thing, you might see some overlapping edges or faces and that will cause our game or our model to glitch and it'll kind of flash different textures at different times. So this is exactly why we don't trust Booleans and it's only as a last resort if we have no other way of achieving what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these and not do this method and teach you how in class we actually modeled this cicat hat. So between the cone and the donut, which one is the more complex shape? Uh, I would argue the donut is, and that's exactly what we're gonna start with. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the donut primitive here, and we're gonna use snap to grid just to make sure that we're in the middle, and we're gonna left click, drag out, and we're gonna drag this and make it a certain height. It doesn't matter what number we use, um, because we can always go back to the channel box and change the numbers. We're gonna make this exactly a radius of eight units. And we're gonna have a section of, let's say 0 0.5. I think that's a good size for the rim. Now let me go and go to quad view and show you guys what we've got so far. We've got this, it's all looking good. And instead of combining it with the cone, we can use the existing geometry of the donut and create the, the cone itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut out an edge ring. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, right click, go to face mode. I'm going to click out, I'm probably going to cut out this inner face right here. So to do this, we're going to click on this face, click on the neighboring face that you want to create the edge ring around, and then double left click. And you'll see here that I selected the uh, inner edge ring. I'm going to go ahead and hit delete and delete these faces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the top edge loop and the bottom edge loop and combine to make the top and the bottom of the hat. So I'm going to go on the edge loop first. So I'll click on the top edge loop right here. You can see how it detected these 20 edge loops right here with 20. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the extrude tool, which is just a, uh, we're going to use a scale tool. And with the shift modifier, we're going to extrude inward. So inward like that. I'm going to extrude inward right here. I can see I'm getting negative. It doesn't really matter. Just extrude inward. And then you can just go ahead and move that inward to kind of get closer to one another. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and merge these points into one point. 
Now you can do this with a vertex. I'll use a vertex. I think vertex is with Merchant Center is a little bit better, more accurate. So I'm just going to hold uh, the selection tool and hold shift. I'll kind of select the technically edge loop, but technically just vertice loop in here. I'm going to use this little pizza icon here called Merge to Center, and that will make it one single point. So again, I'm going to control Z so to show you guys. I have 20 points when I started. When I click Merge to Center, those 20 points now become one point. Okay? So now I have this point, and if I pull it up, I'm pretty much done. But I'm going to pull both of these at the same time. I'm going to hold Alt, kind of swing my camera to the bottom here. And you can see that I have the same uh, uh, faces on the bottom with the hole. So I'm going to go in here. And click on this edge loop. So right click, go to edge mode. I'll click on the bottom edge loop and do the same thing on the bottom. So I'm going to click on the bottom edge loop. I'm going to use R tool to scale. I'm going to start scaling inward. But I don't want to scale here. I want to actually extrude inward. So I'm going to hold shift modifier and extrude inward. And then I'm going to go to vertex mode because I don't always trust edge mode to merge to center. So I'm going to click on vertice, vertices here. And again, click double left click. Uh, sometimes I use this tool so that the widgets aren't as big. And then hold shift, and that clicks on the edge loops. Make sure that you have all 20 here selected. Merge to center, and boom. I now have the geometry I need uh, for the saccade. So now I just need to move both these points up. So I'm going to go ahead and go to, uh, you can go to x-ray mode, or you can click on both. I'm going to go ahead and click on x-ray mode, which is four. You'll see that I have two points. I'm um, left-click drag. Um, right now, it only lets me select the top one. If you go to your modeling toolkit, remember that you have this option where you can turn camera selection off, which allows you to use like x-ray selection here. I can select both of these. If I ever put it back on, it'll be limited to what my camera can see from the outside. So back on shaded view, I don't see the bottom one, so I can't really click on it. But if I click on camera selection off, I get kind of like x-ray vision. I can select both of them. So that would be similar to selecting both of these. So now I'm going to select both of these. And I want to make sure that I'm right side up here. It looks like I'm right side up. I'm going to go Y upward. I'm going to go ahead and use the Move tool and just move these two points up. So let's go to Quad View here so I can see how high I'm pulling it up. And that looks good right there. And now this is the proper way to model a Sika hat because I am for sure guaranteeing that all these right here, this edge loop right here, is an edge loop. You can see that I just simply double left clicked and it selected the edge loop on the outside because I never merged any points. It's all the same geometry that I started with when I had the torus or the donut. And that guarantees now that all these, if I move them or if I modify them in any way, that I will have a, um, a continual edge loop here. So if I move all of this, all this will move up, all this will move down. Right? And if I move just the vertexes, it'll be the same thing. So I click on this one, hold shift, click on these 20, and again, I have no unconnected vertices overlapping one another that created these overlapping edges. This is all one beautiful solid mesh. So real quickly, let's go ahead and UV edit this so that we can create uh, a texture for this to cat. So I'm going to kind of go through this process pretty quickly. I'm going to start by cutting a seam. I'm going to open up my UV editor. I'm going to click on the object. So the object gets automatically UV mapped, but we don't usually like these. So we're just going to go ahead and click on all of this and just hit delete. I'm going to go to UV shells and select all of these and hit delete. And I'm going to start fresh. So I'm going to go to object mode here. I'm going to use create. And I usually, like, I usually typically like camera-based selection here. So you can see what it looks like here to here. And using this, I'm going to go ahead and click and cut seams. As if I'm cutting this, you know, 3D shape into, you know, 2D shapes. I'm going to cut a seam on the top here. I'm going to go ahead and click on my UV toolkit, and under Cut, there's a tool called Cut. So I'm basically cutting along the seam. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And when I cut along the seam, it will create a two different shells. So I'll show you what the shells look like. I'll click on UV shell here, right-click UV shell, and I'm going to click on one of the shells and move it up. That is the top shell. And now this is the bottom part of the hat and the donut that goes around it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm going to kind of move my 3D model here. And notice that even though I cut it and moved it here, it didn't move it in the uh, 3D space. Because remember, this is the UV space and this is the uh, 3D space. So again, I'm going to go to edge mode. I'm going to double left click here. I get the bottom. I'm going to again cut it. 
And once I cut it, right, I can now remove the bottom shell. So I'm clicking on the bottom shell here and remove it down there. And now I have to, uh, I have three shells that I can now use to model. Now these shells need to be flattened and I will flatten them in a minute. But first, this 3D thing is still a 3D shape that I cannot flatten. So let me show you what these look like when I flatten it. I'm click on this one first, under unfold. I can click on unfold. You can see that I, when I unfold it, it becomes a nice flat shape. I can easily put a texture on and map the uh, texture I'm gonna use for the cat hat for the top. We do the same thing with the bottom, click on the bottom shell, unfold. And now I have both the top and bottom shells here. And you know it doesn't matter if they overlap, uh, although that will be a problem later. I have both these two shells flattened out. If I try to unfold this, and I'll show you guys what it looks like, it's gonna be a gigantic mess. It's gonna look like this. But the problem with this is that even though it looks like it's flat, it's not really flat because these faces are curved. So this face looks like this when I click here, but this face right here is gonna be exactly the same size. So this is a problem that I might have because I'm not sure about what perspective this is. So what I really want is to cut this out into a flat tube because I imagine if this was really flattened out, it would not look like this, right? It'll look flattened out. It'll look like a long strip, okay? So I need to cut a seam on the inside. So I'm going to cut a seam here. I'm going to go to edge mode. I'm going to double left click on this. And I don't really want to cut all the way up here. So I'm going to hold shift to decent like this. And I'm going to hit uh, shift to decent like this. So now I have the other 19 edges to cut a seam right here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And now when I cut it here, and I go to UV shell, I can now click on the shell. Now that I have this slit right here, I can unfold this thing and it'll wrap out nice and straight and rectangular for me. which makes it a lot easier for me when I'm doing UV editing. So um, the only last uh, complaint we have now is that this thing is not uh, rotated uh, well. So I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, E tool, which is to rotate, and rotate the entire shell like this. And it's not quite horizontal and vertical yet. So once I have that, I can go ahead and click on straighten uh, UVs. And it should straighten out all my UVs vertical and horizontal and perfectly spaced out. So there you have it. Now you have all these three shells in perfectly flattened out. And I'm going to go ahead and um, align all of these into one UV space. To do that, you're going to go to Align and Step Tool Sets. And I think, oh, sorry, Arrange and Layout. And there's a button for Layout. And when I click Layout, boom, all of this gets aligned. And not only is it aligned, it's actually proportional to one another. So uh, there's a button right here that I showed you in class that lets you see if your stuff were aligned. So if I click on this, you'll see that every square here and on here are about the same size. Now let me show you when it did not. So let me actually control Z a few times. So back here, before I hit the Align tool, you can see here that some of these squares are small. Some of these squares might be a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm not sure if it is or not, but you can see here, I can kind of exaggerate it here. If I use the Scale tool and it scaled up here, by scaling up, my squares here are smaller and these squares here are larger. So when I give to someone to texture this, if they didn't know that this is not scaled properly, they would think that one square here, it's about exactly the size of one square here but they don't notice that because I'm the one that's mapping it, not the texture of them themselves. So it's important that we have what we call pixel density, the same pixel density. What the one, spa one square here on this space should be the same size as one square here on this space. So again, it's okay that I scaled it up because now I can just click on all three shells and use the layout tool and it will scale it back to have everybody exactly the same pixel density size, okay? So the only thing uh, left I would do before we start moving it into Photoshop is that I'm gonna use the W tool and just move these shells a little apart from one another, just so that there's a little bit of breathing space here. And another thing I'm gonna do is just scale it so that it's not edge to edge, because that makes it also difficult for us. So I'm gonna hold all three, I'm gonna scale. I'm gonna just scale in just a little bit so that they're off the edges here. So what we're gonna do now is that we're going to grab this right here, this mapping, and putting it into Photoshop. To do that, you're gonna click on this little camera button right here, UV Snapshot, and you're gonna make sure that it's a TIFF file. We're gonna make it a nice, large size, 4096 by 4096. We're gonna lock the aspect ratio. 
We'll make the edge color nice and black so we can see it. I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. It's going to save this uh, somewhere. And I'm going to save it, uh, as you can see. Let me save it in a new place. I'm going to hit Browse. I'm going to save it on my uh, desktop here. And I'm just going to call it my Cat Hat UV Mat. So that's why I saved it. I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. It's going to create this Cat Hat UV TIFF. Let's go ahead and open up in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and type in my Photoshop here. And I'm going to open up Photoshop. And what I'm opening up is basically this map. And whatever I color on top of this map and import it back into, um, into Maya, it will show up and texture my Cicat. So you can see I have Photoshop open. I'm going to File, Open. And I'm going to go to my desktop and find that TIFF file that I just created. So there we have it. It's a cat hat UV map. And this is the picture of my UV map. Now, the lines are really small because, again, this is super high quality. We're talking about 4,096 here. If I zoom in, you'll see here that these represent the edges and location of where I want to paint. So if I, for example, um, create a new layer... And I'm going to, let's say, take my brush tool, V, and I'm just going to paint black. I can make my Cat hat black. And if I import this back as a texture into Maya, my top of my hat will be black. Or maybe the bottom of my hat. I'm not sure which one this one maps to. I'm going to go ahead and Control-Z that. Uh, instead, we're going to use a texture that we found online. So I'm going to go File, and I'm going to use Place Embedded. And I'm going to go find the Cicat hat that I downloaded online, the texture. And let's see, we're here. We got a Cicat hat texture. I'm going to hit Place. And I have this little image. I'm going to go ahead and scale it up. Now make sure that you hold Shift to keep your proportion here. Go ahead and shift that up and scale it up nice and big. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that right over our lines. I'm going to zoom in real quick to make sure that my... UV map is matching that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab this layer and kind of put it on top, otherwise I can't see the lines. So there we go. And I'm going to use my Move tool here. And I'm going to move it nice and centered with this and kind of on the inside of this. It doesn't really matter if inside or outside, but you can see how this all got to map to those triangles that are inside of my UV world. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing again here. I'm going to go ahead and grab another one of these. So I'm going to just go ahead and zoom out here, Control zero and I'm going to grab an Alt key, left click, drag to create a duplicate, and drag one right here as well. I'm going to zoom in on this space right here. And again, using my Move tool, get it exactly centered right there. It doesn't have to be exactly right, but I want it roughly. That looks good. And again, as long as the stuff that's outside of the faces, you can put whatever you want here, and it'll never show up on your model. Right? It's only the things within that map to the 3D space world will be utilized. So I got the inside here, the inside here. So the only thing left is this over here. And I can do whatever I want here. Um, but I'm just going to kind of make it easy on myself. I'm just going to hit Alt. And I'm just going to just drag a couple copies of this over. Something like that. And basically, I'll just kind of steal some of the textures and have some... Uh, kind of going in, someone going out, some going diagonal, something like that. So that's a quick way of creating some nice UV textures here. So I'm going to start storing this, but before I export this, I don't want to keep the, the edges. So you forget to turn this off, you're going to leave those edges, uh, dark black edges showing up on your model. So I'm going to kind of turn that off. I'm going to keep everything else. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go ahead and save as, or save a copy as, I'm going to call this a cat hat UV map, and I'm going to put textured. Okay, I'm not going to zip it. I don't want any compression here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Um, let's see where this thing actually saved when I click Save As. It's saved onto my desktop, so I have one called Texture on my desktop. Let's go ahead and open up Maya again. Now, in Maya, I'm going to go ahead and create a material. 99% um, of the time when we create materials, we're going to use AI standard surface. So to create one, you can just simply right-click on your object, and you're going to right-click, and you're going to assign a new material. And this box will show up about what material you're going to assign. 
we, again, inside uh, our class, will typically use a Arnold shader called AI Standard Surface. So I created this AI Standard Surface. You don't see it, but it's being applied. And now I can go to the Hyper Shader window and kind of say what that uh, surface will look like. Now, for now, I want to keep it simple. You see here it's called AI Standard Surface. I'm going to go ahead and rename it. This is going to be my Sakat Hat Texture material, or my Sakat Hat material. And materials are quite complex, and this will be for another discussion about how I can make it look like how much metal it looks like, how rough it looks like, things like that. But for now, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to make it um, about a third way rough, maybe more than that, maybe two thirds way rough. So this is the color roughness, and this is the specular roughness. And I'm going to change the color. It's not going to be this default gray color, but I'm going to click on this button right here to choose where I want the color to come from. I want it to come from a file, and it's going to open up this file node right here. Let me enlarge it so you guys can see a little bit better. It's going to create this file node right here. And if I click back on here, I'm going to say that this file should be of the type right here, click on this. This file is going to have the image name of the Saket Hat Texture TIFF that I just created. Oh, no, that's the right one. I thought that one the right one. I think this one's the right one. That looks right to me. Yep, that looks right. So I'm going to click on that. So that should be the Saket Texture, which should be applied to this right here my Saket Hat AI Center Surface. Okay, and uh, usually you will get to see this. Let me actually clear this real quick. Yep, so you click on the input connection, you can see here that the texture that's gonna be placed is this TIFF file. This TIFF file is gonna feed into the base color of my Saket Hat material. And then now when I go back to my scene, I should be able to see my hat textured. Okay. And now if I switch my mode, my view mode to textured mode, which is number six on my hotkey, or five, six, turn off this, you can see right here that it has been mapped. Now this is not mapped correctly, so I think I clicked on the wrong file. This is not mapped correctly. So what did I do wrong? Let's go ahead and see what I did wrong. So I mapped it, but didn't quite map correctly. It should be in this UV space one by one. So let's go ahead and go back here and see what I did. May I click on the wrong file? Let's make sure in Photoshop. Oh, it looks like this. So this is obviously correct. Let's go file, save as again. Let me save as like a two or something in the back. So I'm not like clicking on the wrong one. So I'm gonna click on two, no compression. Let's go back to my Maya here and change the file here. So I'm gonna click here, make sure it's a cat hat two. Uh, there's a TIFF version and this version. So maybe it's this version. It should keep the exact same UV space. So this should work. But let's go ahead and see if I had an issue. Let's go ahead and click close. And this did not map correctly to the 2D space. Uh, let's see. What did I do wrong? Let's see here. Let's go file. And let me go ahead and export this. And let's see what I did wrong. Export as, maybe end up making it smaller or something. Okay, this is correctly sized. Let's actually try this PNG and see if I might have messed something up here. So let's go ahead and save it on my desktop again. Actually, to save it in my documents folder. Just keep it separate here. I'm going to click save here. This looks correct. And I'm going to go to my menu here. It must be something I must have done. I'm not quite sure what I did. I think it might be something to do with the saving process. Let's go back to here in my hyper shader. And let's click on my PNG file and see if that fixes the issue. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to my documents folder. And I saved it as a PNG now. And now it should be, yep, looks like it changed the way it mapped. I'm going to click close. And there you have it. My Saket hat now is properly in the game. Okay, now to take a beauty shot, um, real quickly guys, we're gonna go ahead and add a Arnold render of here. We're gonna add a Arnold dome light so we can start seeing it. I'm gonna click on the preview button. I'm gonna hit the play button to play 
So I will take a picture of our current camera view. Play. And we should be able to take a beauty shot of our camera. I'll hit refresh here. Because, oh, it is lagging. Let's go ahead and give it some time. There we go. So it looks like I can move it down just a tad bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just move it down a little bit or zoom out. You can hit, actually hit this button right here, see what's uh, being shown or not shown in your beauty shot. I'm going to click here and go back to my beauty shot, which is right here. Hit refresh. It should move it a little bit more down. Nope, it did not. I don't know why it's not mapping one-to-one. -one. It should give us a little bit of space. Let me just move down just a little bit. Okay, and I'll go back to here. Hit play. And it's going to take our beauty shot. Let's go File, Save Image. And now go ahead and save your Sakat Hat beauty shot. So I'm just call it Sakat Hat beauty shot for YouTube right here. And there you have it, guys. You guys have now a beauty shot of your Sakat Hat and... Uh, completely modeled and UV edited and UV mapped and UV textured. And I'll see you guys in the next video.